This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and Tropical Birding, the leader in bird, wildlife and photography tours. Tropical birding guides are renowned for their expertise. People like Jose, Christian, Sam, but all these guides, as good as they may be, pale in comparison to one of these guides who has superhuman skills and x-ray vision. I give you Nick Athenis, a.k.a. Superbirder. Let's go birding. Up, up and away. Let's do it. I'm keen. Let's go. Yes. How awesome is that? Oh, yes. Tandayapa Lodge is the ultimate birding retreat. Besides the stupendous hummingbird feeders and also all the other feeders around the lodge, they've also got an intricate trail system. You can walk down the trails here and the accommodations and the service are out of this world. Come down to Tandayapa and enjoy this little hidden gem of Ecuador. About an hour's drive from Tandayapa Lodge is a very productive birding spot called Milpe. This land here was purchased by the Mindo Cloud Forest Foundation and it used to be cattle pasture that has now been converted into a very productive birding location. If we look to the right of me, you'll see this cattle pasture which is barren and devoid of trees. And to the left of me here, after only five years, this forest has regenerated and come back. And this location is very good for some great target birds like Choco Toucan, Choco Trogan, Choco Warbler and Club Winged Mannequin, all of which are endemics to this particular region. Let's go birding. Mannequins have some of the most advanced evolutionary displays of any birds, but few can compare to that of the Club Winged Mannequin. This unique sound permeating through the forest around me is caused not by a bird singer, but by a bird violinist. We're at the concentrated lick of a few club-winged mannequins. These birds prefer these melastoma trees behind me because they've got these open branches on which to perform their elaborate displays. Oh, that is awesome. Clubwing mannequin doing its display right in front of us here on an open branch. There's a female around here as well. This is going to be spectacular. This has got to be one of the craziest sounds in the bird world and it's not caused by the bird's voice at all. It's believed that these mannequins create the sound through interlocking feathers the feathers actually interlock and the tiny spines in the feathers rub together and vibrate just like a violin would. And as it does that sort of display with its wings, pushing its wings behind, it's going to be rubbing those feather spines together, creating this very unique and strange sound. The mannequins were tough. Uh, there was a Japanese film crew about an hour away that's here for 22 days to shoot some mannequins doing their thing and I'd given up and we heard them and uh, went in there and I, I said we're gonna need 22 days to get the shot but went in in two minutes saw it locked on them got it 
so that's the way it goes. James is like my rabbit's foot, so it's always good to have him around. Not quite as musical as the club-winged mannequins are the white-bearded mannequins of Rio Salanche. Here we are along this path and we can hear this firecracker-like noise going on from the side of the path. And this actually comes from this bird's display. It's got these specially modified wings and it flicks them together and causes this crack. We're going to go inside. Nick's going to take us and we're going to see if we can get a look at this gorgeous little bird. We've got the white bearded mannequins on these perches displaying. They'll fly back, go down close to the ground, then fly back up on a perch. But we've got this little beauty right here, probably about 15 feet from us, in this Choco Lowland Forest. That was so spectacular. We were sitting for probably close to what an hour and a half Nick waiting for waiting to get that footage getting bitten by mosquitoes hot and humid but to see that white beard come out and that awesome display with the wings what an incredible bird Terrific. yeah have you seen that a lot Nick the display I see the bird a lot but I don't see it displaying so closely like that very often that was really lucky absolutely awesome yes white bearded mannequin right here in the Choco Lowlands of Northwest Ecuador Awesome, thanks so much mate, that was great. First time visitors to the neotropical forests might be intimidated by the sheer impenetrable sea of green, but also by the fact that they can be deceptively quiet at times. And this is due to the fact that a lot of tropical birds feed in mixed flocks, so you're only going to see them at a certain time in a big flock, but also because some of them are very stationary and motionless. Now, I'm here with Jose, who has grown up in this area, and it always fascinates me how local guides are able to spot so many more birds than us. Can you tell me a little bit about how you do that, Jose? Um, I think it the way how we spot the birds is because, like me, I have Amazonian eye and and also we look where the birds are sitting or like a horizontal branch and big quiet branches. So we're looking for them and it's the way what we how we do it. So. Great. And it's, it's very interesting to find birds like trogons in forests like this because they're very, very quiet. You might see a little flash of red, but then they'll sit dead quiet on a twig because they sit and wait foragers. So they're going to sit there and wait for insects to come past. Then they're going to sally forth, grab those insects, and often return to the same perch. So what we've got up here, right next to us here, at the top of this tree, is both a male and a female collared trogon. Absolutely beautiful birds with bright, bright red on them. And the other species here, which we're looking for, is the endemic choco trogon, endemic to the whole choco region of northwest Ecuador and southwest Colombia. Okay, there's a horizontal branch over there. There's a choco trogon female sitting on it. Can you see which, it? Which branch are you talking oh, about? Oh, right there, right there. You gotta lean down a little bit. Oh, there, right okay, there. I've got it. Yep. You got it? Awesome, that Fantastic. is a beauty. Okay, right. I'd like to see the male, but this is great. Yeah, beautiful bird. Nothing. Yep. One of the endemics of the choco region, right? It is. Okay, so that's northwestern Ecuador and southwestern Colombia. Colombia. You okay. got it. Wow. Excellent, good job. Fantastic. Walking around the forest in Milpe is an absolute treat. Everything was in fruit and we came across crimson rumped arasaris, broad billed motmots, chestnut mandible toucans and even a female purple honey creeper. This Birding from the Edge segment is brought to you by Nikon, manufacturers of the Edge line of optics. One creature you don't want to mess with in the tropical jungles of Ecuador is the bullet ant. I inadvertently 
came across the wrong end of this little beast. Ah, oh, my water. Look at that. Stung me right in the finger. Holy mackerel. Yeah. It's also called Vente Cuatro because it's supposed to sting and hurt for 24 hours. Woo! Oh my gosh. Caught me right in the finger. I've been stung by bees, wasps, bitten by spiders and stuff, but that just, I mean, it is throbbing. That is an incredible amount of pain. Woo! Man, conga ants, stay away from them. This is birding from the edge. Ecuador has really embraced its ecotourism, and this is evident in some of the restaurants and the lodging, all embracing birds and the rainforest. This is really cool because not so long ago, pastures and cattle farming were ascribed a lot more value than the rainforest itself. And today, thankfully, many Ecuadorians realize the value of their natural resources and the forest around them. For two days around Tandayapa Lodge, we've had some magnificent birding. We've seen plate-billed mountain toucans, we've seen a variety of antipodes, we've seen some incredible hummingbirds, but one of the birds we've been looking for over the past few days is the toucan barbet. And this bird shares its genus with only one other species of barbet, the prong-billed barbet. This bird is so hard to see, it's a choco endemic found only in northwest Ecuador and southwest Colombia. And this here in Tandayapa Valley is the best place in the entire world to see this incredibly colorful bird. Toucan barbet, just so that you all know, is a barbet that looks like a toucan and not a toucan that looks like a barbet. In the same way as an owlet nightjar is a nightjar that looks like an owlet. Toucan barbet gets its name from the fact that it has a very, very big bill, almost like a toucan, and of course it's also very colorful, like all the species of toucans as well. You can see the way this barbet is mashing that fruit, trying to get at the inside. And that is quite typical of barbets. They will actually mash the fruit before they swallow it. They're basically two types of frugivorous birds. They can be broken down into two categories, mashers and gulpers. And mashers will be birds like tanagers and barbets. Gulpers will be birds like toucans and mannequins, where they'll actually swallow the fruit whole. Both aiding, obviously in the dispersal, of the abundance and diversity of fruit trees in tropical rainforests. I'm at a loss for words. We've been getting such killer views right now for about an hour of these two toucan barbets that have come in. And this is such a stunning bird, words really can't describe the colors on it. It is so, so beautiful. And you really do become speechless when you look at the colors on this bird. You can hear when they come into a feeding source, they go tuck, 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 like that with their bills. Very, very excited when they're coming to a feeding fruit tree or any kind of food source. There's a lot of excitement with these toucan barbets. What a beautiful bird to watch. Tandayapa is the best place in the world for this species. Come down to northwest Ecuador and see toucan barbet for yourselves. Bienvenidos a Ecuador y vamos a observar aves, por favor. A mixed feeding flock of birds in the tropics can be likened to an exclusive club, almost like a golf club for exclusive members. And a typical flock here will have five to ten pairs of different species of birds which will constantly be in that flock. It'll be their exclusive club. Then you'll have a few birds which might join that club for the day. They'll go off, they'll disperse, and maybe two or three days later they'll come and join that flock again. And further still, you might get the odd species that's an only an occasional member of this club. It might come 
and only join this club once in a while. It's quite interesting when we look at these bird flocks to note that they all have these developed feeding niches within the flock. So you'll have wood creepers focusing on the bark of trees and woodpeckers focusing on looking under the bark of these trees. You'll then have foliage gleaners which will almost be like looking under dead or decaying matter on the trees, in the vines, looking to glean insects in that manner. You'll have the flycatchers sallying forth and grabbing insects in flight. And then of course you'll have the fruit-eating birds as well, like the tanagers which might be right in the top of the canopy, gathering little delectable morsels of fruit. So each one of these birds functions in its own particular niche within this amazing feeding flock. What's also interesting about these mixed flocks is that you get two general types of flocks. You get canopy flocks, which prefer the upper mid-level of the canopy to right to the top of the canopy. And then you also get low-level flocks. And these flocks will be foraging right in the understory of the forest. And the absolute jackpot, if you like mixed flock birding, is when you get an understory flock and a canopy flock right at the same time. Because then you're just birding all over the place. And you can see in a very good flock, if you're an experienced birder, 40 or 50 different species within one mixed flock. Now that is just frenetic birding at its best. There are many different hypotheses as to why birds join mixed flocks. Some of them are more believable than others. For instance, the fact that there's surely safety in numbers, the fact that these birds are getting to food sources that they might not necessarily be able to utilize as a single species. But all these are just hypotheses at the end of the day, and we are not birds, so we can only guess as to why birds employ this crazy behavior. Rio Salancha is about an hour and a half's drive from Tandayapa Lodge, and it has got a perfect example of Choco Lowland Forest here, a very rare and threatened habitat. The other great thing about Rio Salancha is that we can climb up to this canopy over here, this canopy tower, and we can basically view the mixed feeding flocks at eye level. It makes our job filming them a lot easier, but also if you're a bird watcher and you come into Ecuador, you're going to struggle to see a lot of the canopy species, and this is great because you've got a 360 degree panorama of the canopy. Right, Arasari just flew in. Jose, I've got an Arasari here. Just look next Where to this palm tree, just, just on top of that uh, Cecropia there. Oh, oh, it's oh. Oh, there we go. That's a pale mandible arasari. Awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to the left now. Okay, I've got it. I've got, got it. it. Tell me about this bird quickly. Actually, this is uh, almost Ecuadorian endemic, but uh, unfortunately for us, they found it in Peru also. Okay. And a little bit in Colombia. Do you see the red room? Yep, I see it. It's a bird, great looking bird. Also. What oh, a great man. looking bird. Fantastic. Pale mandibled arasari right here in the Choco Lowland Forest of Northwest Ecuador. Hey, we've got a barber just flew into this tree. Nick, just in front of us here? Yeah, I got on it. On that right-hand branch? Mm-hmm. Is that an orange-throated barbet? Orange-fronted barbet, yeah. That orange-fronted barbet, okay, it's awesome. an excellent bird. No, it's a female, it's got a dark hood. Wow. That's a pretty special bird of this area, isn't it? Yeah, that's a Choco endemic. It is only found in Northwest Ecuador and Southwest Colombia. And what it's very hard bird. to see in Colombia. You know, if you want to see this bird, you really have to come to Ecuador. And interesting that it's, that it's with this mixed flock. Tell me about that, because you always think of mixed flock birds as being, um, you know, insect eaters, all, all chasing insects and stuff, but they also follow fruit, and they also eat fruit and stuff. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, m most, of the, most of the birds have been seen here, like the tanagers and, and, and this barbet are actually fruit-eating birds, but they still follow mixed, mixed species flocks. Right. That's a great bird. Wow, it's a pretty bird, huh? And is the male male more brightly colored than the female? Uh, the, the male actually is all white below. It doesn't have that dark hood. Okay. Pretty bird. Thanks, Nick. That's great. Well, we've had a great morning here, birding this mixed flock on top of this canopy tower. And we've just found our golden bird for this mixed flock. Nick, tell us about the bird we're looking at right now. Well, this is a slate-throated neck catcher. We actually have, we have a bird here preening on a branch, and then there's another one here just coming to the right of it. And this is 
quite a difficult bird to find. Its range, it gets all the way up into Colombia, even into, into the Panama. But there are not many places where you can come and actually expect to see it this well. You know, this, this tower is, makes it a lot easier. We've got, hey Nick, we've got another bird coming in. There's actually three of them now. Three together. Have you ever seen three of these I've together? I've never seen three of these together. We're very, very lucky to see this. The slate-throated gnatcatcher occurs from Panama through Colombia to Ecuador. But it is rare everywhere in its range. So much so that certain authors have suggested that slate-throated gnatcatcher be upgraded to near-threatened status in Ecuador. They require very extensive patches of canopy humid forest. But unfortunately, humid forest has been degraded over much of Ecuador. And now this species is very, very rare. And you can count yourself very lucky to come across this canopy-dwelling gnatcatcher. Awesome. That's our golden bird for this show, the slate-throated gnatcatcher. Never been before